And we're back to another episode of the Let's Play King's Quest 2, Romancing the Stones. I'm your host, RPG Guy, and let's go get us the next exactly. stone, shall we? So, again, we got now we have this emerald that removes enchantments off of things. What does that mean? Let's give it a try. As you direct the sun's light through the emerald at the snake, you behold a wondrous transformation. Do we? Wild stallion! Before you now stands a magnificent winged horse. Which is... We'll name him Dinner. Good day, Thank Dinner. for freeing me. The horrid enchanter <laughs> transformed me into that legless thing, for I refused to be his steed. Um, thanks, young Sean Connery voice. That was quite a gamble, to refuse an enchanter. True, but I could not have accepted, even if I had wanted to. For I am a disciple of the cloud, and can serve no land dweller. Disciple of the cloud? What does that mean? First, tell me of what you seek up here. You take a deep breath, then explain about the door of destiny, the gems of nature, and your present quest to locate the growth gem. And hookers and blow, can't forget that. You seek the air gem. Yes, that is right. You know of it? Most certainly. But you will not be able to reach it by any means available to you or any of your kind. I would gladly take you to it, but alas, the enchanter took and hid from me my bridle. Without it, we could search for a thousand years and still never find the cloud spirit. Where did he hide your bridle? I do not know. Perhaps a clue may be found in that blackguard's abode behind me. What is this spirit you speak of? The essence of what you seek. It passes through us as we grow, all through our lives, though few are ever aware of it. You will know soon enough when I take you to it. Well, that's pretty much the gist of it. So we're going to go back to the cave that we were just in. And see if we can learn something. You notice that some writing has been engraved into the wall. You read the inscription. In row of stones that number six, half and a pair from left do pick. Half and a pair, okay. From left do you pick. Well, then my spell avoid the tricks. The tricks. engraving on the wall reads... Oh. In row of stones that number six, half and a pair from left do pick, quell then my spell, avoid the tricks. Interesting. A neatly displayed scroll hangs on the wall. However, its archaic symbols and wording will forever remain a mystery to you. That's the clue we need. I think, hold on. You have better things. Some incredibly valuable furniture has been placed here. You wonder how it is protected against the elements, as there are no obvious means of sealing the cave. It's a good question. That is. Pretty much. Just hanging out. Waiting for something to kind of happen. Pretty much if you're trying to figure out, waiting for the occupant to come home because he has some explaining to do. You cannot remove the engraving. You get... You walk closer. You read... The engraving. Yeah, I already read that, really. Do 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 do. Now, here we go. Footsteps approaching. It's Radagast the Brown. 
Uh-oh, the enchanter has caught you in his lair. He twirls his hands, aims them at you, and then utters some words under his breath. Hocus Pocus Alakazam. You sensation all over your body as the enchantment attempts to transform you into whatever the enchanter has fancied. At the same time, you also feel the comforting energy of the emerald shielding you. The enchanter's twisted smile turns downwards. He scowls at you. Wah, 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 wah. Red buddy, you've got some explaining to do. There is a look of panic on the man's face. He does not dare breathe. I hereby order you to depart from Kalima forever, never to trouble its citizens again, lest you earn the fullness of my wrath. The Enchanter looks baffled. You sigh inwardly and try again. Leave. If you come back, then you will get it. <laughs> the Enchanter nods frantically oh my God. as much as he can without cutting his own neck on your sword edge. He gestures quickly with his hands. Wow. That is, uh... That is uh, quite the uh, little endeavor there. All right, let's go ahead and back out here. And uh, so we need to find the, the bridle. Luckily, the clue on the wall gave us some information, and thus the enchanter will no longer bother us. Which is for the best. Radagast the broom. But in order for us to get the bridle, we actually have to kind of go back down to the world below so to speak or at least off this freaking mountain you roll the magic carpet lay it on the ground and sit on it the carpet rises into the air again <coughs> the how? carpet begins to descend how does this thing how does it fueled by thousand miles to the soul <laughs> oh i love team four star all right, so let's go ahead, and now we're looking for a bunch of rocks that are pretty much sticking out for us to f to fuck with. However, like anything, it's never, like all things, it's never that simple, is it? Okay, and thus we have a bunch of rocks. One, two, three, four, five, six is where we want to be. We're going to make a save because this is very easy to kind of screw up here. And you? You bend over and hold the emerald above the stone so that the sun's light channels through it. Sweet. Incredible. The rock has transformed into a silver studded bridle. Well, just yoink that. You take the bridle. Your crystal has become a dazzling emerald. You sense magic in its refracted light. The leather bridle is studded with silver rivets and a silver bit. Sweet. Just move. I think I think we can only need. I think we only need to move one screen over. Could be back to where we were, but we'll see. But ultimately, we need to head back the way we came. You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet begins to rise skyward. Whee! I mean, it's either fueled by the souls of the undead or it's powered by Graham's As you reach almighty down farts. To get the carpet, it vanishes into thin air without even so much as a puff of smoke. Oh man, no more magic carpet. What a load of horse shit, y'all. Alright, let's go this way. And let's go ahead and make another save, because saving is your friend. Boop. <laughs> you slip the bridle over the horse's head. It whinnies its approval. Come, Come climb, climb up on my back. And up, up. And away we go. Hold on. This will be a little 
accelerating. God, just don't show us your rocket, bro. Don't need to see that. I saw the jackass. Of the cloud gracefully soars high into the sky. These things are horrifying. The reins tightly and hold on for dear life as he swoops and dips between the clouds. After a time, he draws near to a thick patch of luminous mist. As you pass through it, the horse sets itself down, seemingly on top of a cloud. It is all right. You can dismount now. Well, hot damn. Believing that you have finally lost all sense of reason, you dismount and prepare for a very long drop. And find yourself standing on a cloud. Hello, you call out. There is no response. Your hand passes through the mist. It is, after all, just cloud. You don't say. That is... Your hand pa Hello? Why do you choose to serve this cloud spirit? It is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. Hmm. I was not aware that I had one. All of us have a destiny. Some are predestined, others are determined by choice. King Horse! I believe yours to be of the latter. Interesting. How is it possible that I can stand upon thin air? Such are not the questions you should be asking. You have come for the air gem, or the growth gem, as it was once named by the ancients. It has not been termed thus without reason, for one who would have the gem as his own must prove himself grown and thus worthy of it. You don't say. Meaning, no disrespect. Uh, mm. Cloud Spirit. Thank you. You must agree, Cloud Spirit, that I am a man fully grown, thus fulfilling your prerequisite. A howling wind deafens you momentarily, though you feel nothing on your skin. The Cloud Spirit speaks again, a little more forcefully. It is not enough that you have grown in body. That much is evident. It must be proven that you have also grown in both mind and soul. So on these shall you be tested. Tested? Those who bear the burden of King are expected to possess certain qualities. Your actions will be judged against the weight of these. It shall be seen whether you are deserving of your title. It shall be seen whether you are worthy of the growth gem. After a moment of silence, the cloud spirit intones, Behold your first test. So here we go. The mist around you clears, and you find yourself in a familiar place. This is Daventry, and furthermore, you are a child again. A slight yes. dizziness overwhelms you for an instant. How strange, you no longer recall anything past this moment in time. It is as if this is happening again for the first time. Even stranger, you are still vaguely aware that you are undergoing a test of some kind, though for what purpose, you cannot fathom. But look! It is Malvolio, your best friend. The two of you are deeply engrossed in a game of bat and ball. Malvolio! Well, that's quite a bit of fun that, you know, a lot of people go, I wish I could go back to the ages of knights and chivalry. And then you realize this is the closest thing to entertainment a child would have. Or even an adult for that matter. You address your liege? Um, no, your majesty, King Edward, sir. I mean, sire. Which of you two boys Kid trunks? that ball? The one that just happened to land on my head? Uh, 
I have asked you both a question. Silence is considered a response equal to impertinence. What are friends for? Why any sensible person would do it under the circumstances? Absolute solution. Partners in crime. Uh, we, the sacrificial lamb, we want to do this one because we are going to make it our fault and our fault alone. You summon all your courage and speak up. Your Majesty, if you please, it was I who hit the ball of the castle wall. It was my fault completely. Please don't punish my friend. The king eyes you carefully. You wonder if you are now in serious trouble. Busted. I would not punish one for something so trivial. However, I will see you play your game elsewhere. Away from here. Y yes sire. <laughs> One more thing, my young fellow. You have demonstrated good character today by taking the blame for your friend. The finest knights in this realm demonstrate their compassion by protecting others, even if that should mean putting themselves at risk. I find that to be a rare quality in the many I meet. When you have grown up, I hope to see you again, perhaps in my service. Thank you, your majesty. Okay. Your second test. I don't know if that could have gone any better or not, but we got through it. You feel yourself growing older, more so than before the tests began. Again, dizziness overcomes you. Your memory of the previous test fades, and in its place, your mind is filled with the knowledge of everything that has since come to pass. This includes, unfortunately, the dreadful misfortunes which have plagued Daventry since the coming of the terrible three-headed dragon. To make things worse, your 17-year-old daughter has been demanded as its latest sacrifice. In return, it will not harm the rest of the population until the next demand. You would go forth to destroy the dragon yourself, but you no longer have the heart for such quests. Never have you felt so forlorn, so frail. You fear that given the choice, you would do anything to rectify the situation. Sh shit's hit the fan, as they say. And what is this? Or who is this? A charming view. No wonder you come here so often. You. I will see you hanged for this intrusion. Guards! Guards! Calling them will do you no good. For even if they come, they will find their king speaking to only the air he breathes. A pox on thee! Who are you? My name, my true name, has been heard by none for an eye on a millennium. It is enough that you know me as the father. Then say what you have come to say and be gone. <laughs> you never were one for small talk. You cursed my family. As a result, that dragon is now loose upon the land and one of my children was kidnapped. Now that is not quite the truth. Do you deny your involvement? Not at all. It is just that you have omitted so much. Speak and be gone. Very well. I want your crown. You cannot believe what you have just heard. This vile creature has caused untold misery throughout your land for nearly 18 years and has now infiltrated your castle just to ask that you hand over your authority to him? Of all the outrageous... Even the narrator's fucking pissed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what would I want with a puny little kingdom when in a few short years I will have more power than Legendamor himself? No. I want only the thing you wear atop your head. Your crown. It is an essential part of my plan. Without it, my efforts to prepare for the ascension will have been in vain. I have waited far too long to be deterred from it now. If you need it that badly, you could have just taken it. You had plenty of opportunities. Are you completely ignorant of the legends of your predecessors? None can possess the crown of the first king unless it's given. If you think for one moment that I would... Before you speak further, consider this. In exchange for what I ask, I shall lift my curse and all that it entails from you and your blighted land. You shall have both it and your family restored in full. 
Mine is your title, naturally. Your mind reels at these words. For almost two decades, a countless number of innocent people have suffered under the afflictions Daventry has had to endure. So many more people would continue to suffer indefinitely, notwithstanding the pain you feel over your own family's misfortune. With a simple statement, you could put an end to it all. But we're too awesome to do that. Fuck you, wizard dude! Oh! You dive forward, swinging your fist at the man to hit him. To your astonishment, your hand passes right through his face. Did you think I would be so foolish as to come unprepared this time? I learned my lesson well. And then we have a choice. Unconditional acceptance, provisional acceptance, serving the lifeline. Pride cometh before all else. Final act of defiance. And really, some of these are very decent, but really it's severing the lifeline. To give you my crown would signify a change of leadership. So says the law of this land. It also says that the crown is to be worn only by those with the highest regard and intent for Daventry. So to give it to such a vile being as you would betray the honor and memory of all the past kings who have worn it. No, I will not do it. Not even for the sake of your family? There are some principles for which even one's family must be sacrificed. The man appraises you as a scientist would a unique specimen. What an intriguing set of morals you have, King Brea. I almost look forward to the time when you will put aside your obligations here and seek me out. I have foreseen that we shall meet again. Guy is kind of a dick. Behold your third test. Once again, you feel yourself age. You are many years older now, though still, thankfully, King of Daventry. As before, the knowledge of the previous test ebbs from your mind. This time, however, it is filled with a greater knowledge of all that has come to pass thus far. Many years have passed. Your children, once heirs to your throne, have forged their own paths in other kingdoms. Fortunately, chance has seen fit to fill the vacuum. Following the restoration of the Mask of Eternity, Daventry now has a new champion. Reference to How another King's Quest game. I am deeply honored, sire. All right. Now, how do you really feel? Scared out of my wit, sire. You smile and feel the lines in your face stretch. You hope you'll get used to it when the true time comes. You know what they've been saying about my decision, that is. The people question my ability to perform the duties when I have another higher obligation. I believe that I can attend to both with the utmost equity. <laughs> to both. You do not deny that this obligation may arise at any moment, perhaps taking you away from this country at a time of great need? Of course not, sire. But I shall deal with that troll, as they say, when I cross that bridge. And there is the matter of you not being of royal birth. That does not sit comfortably with some of the nobles. The qualities of truth, light, and order can shine from even the most impoverished of souls. Nobility is defined through one's actions, not one's lineage, your majesty. You cannot help but smirk. For a man who had once lived as a peasant, he speaks extremely well. Mm-hmm. The question you have to ask is, uh, were these things added in the original or were these things references, um, were these references, uh, added in this remake? I'll let you guys figure that out. Not that it's, not that it's hard. <laughs> uh, and of course we're going to knight this guy because he saved our yeah. kingdom. That's what we You're do. Sure. By virtue of your <laughs> he looks bravery, so goofy there. Loyalty and good conscience. Giant head. I have chosen you to be my first knight. 
Thus you are my successor and heir to this throne. Arise, Sir Connor of Daventry. Possibly a reference to when the kind of major arc In an instant, ends. you find yourself standing before the cloud spirit once more. You also notice that it is starting to get dark. You have demonstrated your sound understanding of compassion, honor, and loyalty. These attributes transcend the mind and speak of the soul within you. Growth continues unabated throughout the lives of all living things. You have grown much, learnt a great deal, and will continue to grow in all ways. You are judged worthy of the air and growth gem. Oh! Let's go ahead and grab it. You take the growth gem. As you feel the knowledge of the last test fade from your mind, the cloud beneath your feet begins to evaporate. You'd better get out of here quickly, Graham. Yes, 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 indeed. So if we don't, you can actually die. So let us, as per usual, skedaddle. Finally, your flight comes to an end. You hope that it will be quite a while before you take to the air again. Where would you like me to land? On the ground would be fine. <laughs> Take this sugar cube. It will protect against the poisonous growth of this land. Tasty. Fare thee well. Goodbye, flying horse of weirdness. So if we ever get horse crap on us from the sky, we know you exactly who you did it. You lost a few things <laughs> during your descent, mostly all that paper you were carrying. You are not concerned, though, as long as you don't get into trouble for littering. As dusk sets in and the pallid moon rises above the darkened horizon, you recall the door of destiny's words regarding the third gym through swampy mire in lone dark castle. Then you remember the great Neptune's disquiet reluctance to speak of Kalima's lord. You sense a growing unease that this final gem may not be the easiest to acquire. He's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. Uh, but yeah, we, we've definitely come uh, a long way. Let's go ahead and delete Fart in the Wind. And let's go ahead and put... Um, darkness time as it is nighttime everything around us is can easily put us at a slight unease two stones down one final stone to go and you know it's that's not the end of it right we just don't get the three stones and everything works out for us we're far still kind of far from our goal as the game did specify the third stone or gem, whatever you want to call it, is going to be definitely the most dangerous and hardest one we'll have had to get. With that said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash jacktarstudios for more live gaming action. Because we're going to... We're going to have to deal with some of the creatures of the night in the coming episodes so with that said again i thank you all for stopping by and we will see you all next time